So good morning, everyone. Uh, once again, I want to thank you all for being here today. I know Saturday mornings uh, probably got better things that you want to do um, than um, talk about uh, talk about trading and talk about price action. But I want to just be a uh, just this is just going to be a real formal informal session today, where we just kind of get into some of the details of of price action. And I want everyone to understand that uh, it's it's perfectly fine if you have questions, feel free to ask them. Um, you won't be you won't be bothering. Um, um, just um, remember that this video will be posted to YouTube. So if you kind of get behind or um, want to rewatch something or uh, or whatever, it will be available to you. Um, so that you can um, go over it as much as you want. So this is the only slide uh, that we're gonna see and we're just gonna go right into price action. I wanna ask anyone here, is anyone have a particular chart that you would like to start with? I mentioned yesterday, if you had a particular chart, maybe that you'd wanna start with. Otherwise, I'll just dig in. Um, with uh, where I want to get going from and and we'll take it from there <clears throat> now let's we can uh, I'll just start there with uh, John Deere um, and please understand guys I'm not gonna run through all your charts okay that's not what we're doing here we're going to be looking at the price action of a, char of a chart looking at the quality of the chart trying to figure out if uh, where those buy signals and sell signals might be coming into play okay so keep that in mind that's what this that's what this class is all about today so if we take a look at um, John Deere here you pull that chart back and by the way notice that I've pulled I'm using a drawing board where I have no drawings on these charts I want to look at these charts completely naked and give you guys um, just a real simple um, just a real simple conversation on how I would look at this chart and that doesn't mean that I'm right and you're wrong it doesn't mean that I have any kind of inside clue that you don't have um, it's just that I've been doing this a long time and when I look at a chart I'm trying to get uh, an assessment of whether or not that chart is something that I'm interested in trading okay so when I look at John Deere here what's your first impression when you just look at this chart John Deere is does this chart inspire a whole lot of confidence in you when you look at it yeah it, it's really not giving you it's not giving you a really good appearance, is it? And when you look at this chart, it's very, very choppy. Look at the big swings in price action. Very, very choppy in its price action. Lots of wicks and tails in it. It is true that there is a bit of a current trend going on, and it's true that it has broken through some levels of resistance. So for example, if we take a look here and just start putting some lines on the chart, we can start beginning to develop a little bit of sense of what's going on in this chart. We can look at next resistance levels in the price action and where this chart might be going. Now, I think this chart um, I think there's a lot better charts to be looking at than this chart. And the, and the reason is when you pull that back and just get that overall look at that chart, it's just not giving you, um, it's not giving you that great appearance that you want to see in a lot of chart. You want to see structure. You want to see consistent structure. And for me, I want to see consistent price action. And this thing is just kind of all over the place. Okay, doesn't mean it won't be fixing itself. You know, one of the things that happens when a stock starts to to repair, it'll go through this really ugly volatility time, rally a bit, and then it starts to settle into a pattern. So this may turn into a really good chart here in the future, but right now it's just kind of all over the place, wouldn't you say? 
And so one that I would generally just pass on by because I, I want a little bit more structure in a chart, okay? So the next chart that was posted there was, was AMD. Let's take a look at AMD. AMD, what do we have going on in this chart? And first off, take that first impression, okay, of the chart. Something I don't talk about a lot, and I really should talk about a little bit more, is this whole idea of accumulation distribution periods in the market, okay? Well, you can see during this area right in here, this was kind of a, an accumulation phase right here. And that's very typical after a pullback. We have a strong pullback or a pullback in the overall market or whatever, and we go through a bottoming pattern, right? You hear me say bottoming pattern a lot, but we go through this um, accumulation phase where the stocks, um, you've got institutions and things starting to pick these up, and we we range around in here. Now notice this price action in here tends to be kind of choppy. Tends to have a lot more wicks and tails, a lot more back and forth, and that's that accumulation phase that goes on in every chart. And you'll see it all these times like this, the, those phases where we're going, you know, we're range bound we're stuck and we're either, and obviously this had to have been an accumulation time, otherwise we wouldn't have come run, running a, and rallying out of there. We go through those periods all over the place in the charts, those accumulation periods. So we had that period here where it was real choppy and real, um, well, just kind of uh, messy. But then notice what happened here, and this is this is gonna be key to a lot of charts that come out of that accumulation phase. They need to break the downtrend. Once that downtrend has been broken, notice that we start to build just a little bit of structure into this chart. Okay, notice that the, the big price bars start to diminish. We start to get more concise in the price action, okay? That price begins to calm down, okay? So when I'm looking at a chart like this and I'm trying to determine um, trends, you guys know, see how quickly I just drew those lines on there. Now you you could have drawn this, this trend line like this. <clears throat> what I will tend to do is I'll look for as many touches as I can. So I will look at this candle here as an outlier because we completely rejected that candle the next day. And I get more touches to my trend line. I get more places where the price action of the chart is moving with, whoops, moving with that trend. Does that make sense, guys? Accumulation phases, uh, uh, yeah, can uh, you'll see it in, uh, in lots of charts, uh, Nini, and, and that's that that's that period where um, that period where we're trying to determine um, if the bulls or bears are going to control this. And there's that phase in there of, of wild and weird choppy price action, and that's normally where the institutions start getting involved in a stock. Okay, um, there's actually a good, a really good study out there. Um, it was done by my old mentor. It, um, it, it's actually how she received her CMT, uh, Chartered Market Technician status. She did a doctorate thesis basically on the cycle of market participants. And where, um, and, and this plays out to be true. Um, um, it, it's, it's quite a study. And in this period, this is when institutions start making their decisions. See, institutions are always ahead of us. And if we let them be ahead of us, instead of trying to predict this, they start to show their hand. 
That's right, Tex. Distribution time can be the, the exact same thing. And that's why we don't jump into this until we break the downtrend. Because we don't know after this push down, if this is a distribution phase or an accumulation phase. We don't know that until we break the downtrend and start holding a price structure together. That's why this in here is just full on speculation. Okay. And why we want to avoid that. Hey, you know, I had a comment today. I'm going to see if I can find that comment in on YouTube here. And I just, I'm going to read to you what the comment said and then how I answered that comment because I think this is really, really important stuff. Um, the, apparently this person um, doesn't um, like trading at all. So why they're watching a trading video, I don't know. But this is the comment. It says, trading is speculation, a negative behavior to be avoided. Now, I thought about that for a second, and I thought, why in the world, first off, why in the world would somebody have that has such a low opinion of trading be watching a trading video? But uh, I guess, you know, there's people out there that just love to spread hate and discontent. <laughs> but I thought about it for a second, and this is what I, what I responded back with. I, I said, I disagree. Trading is a business. In every business, there is a certain element of speculation and risk. And the business of trading is no different. Would you guys agree with that? The business of trading is no different. It's a business like any other. Okay. Now, as retail traders, as retail traders, we have to pay attention to these phases of the market. Okay. We're not big enough. We're not big enough to manhandle a chart like this. Okay. If we get involved in, in playing this game down in here, we end up getting our head handed to us most of the time. Because we have to wait, we have to wait for those institutions to make a decision. It's only the institutions that's going to determine the direction of a stock. You guys need to remember that. We don't, as retail traders, take all of the retail traders in the world and the chances of us moving a big stock is almost impossible. The reason we, we have any effect on it at all is because the institutions are supporting it. Does that make sense? So let's let them make the hard decision. Let's let them make the decision on whether this is an accumulation phase or a distribution phase, and let's wait for the clues. Okay, so by waiting for that downtrend to be broken and then proof that buyers are going to support that downtrend by holding that price, they're going to support it and then start pushing it up. Now we have the phase where high frequency trading firms, retail traders, things like that have an opportunity to enter the trade. Okay, these areas here give us that edge. Okay, and unless you trade with some kind of an edge in the market and understand your place in the market, you're always going to be subject to lots and lots of turmoil. Or as that guy says, speculation is to be avoided. In a large degree, um, he's right. This area here is that speculation period where we have no business playing. Does that make sense? So if we wait, if we're patient, if we let the trade develop, let the chart develop, then we can have an advantage in our positions. That's where we gain that statistical edge. Obviously, not every trade is going to work. 
And there's going to be times like this that just drive you absolutely crazy. You see a beautiful potential entry here. Stock perks up, pops up through here. Everything's looking good. And then they gut it and then turn it right back around. Okay. That is where it requires the patience and discipline of trade planning. If you don't have a good trade plan in there, you're going to get stopped out, whipped on that trade, and won't be in the trade. Even a good plan might have been whipped out on that trade. Okay? But that's, that is the nature of the market. And there's no way around it. There's no way around the, uh, there's, there's no way to, to completely avoid risk. You completely avoid risk. The way you do that is don't trade. Never invest because you're always going to be um, confronting risk. That's the game. Okay, so our advantage is to let those institutions, let those big, those big um, uh, funds decide which stocks they're going to support. If they start supporting them and we pay attention to that price action, then we can start taking advantage of these trends, whether they be up or down, okay? Up or down. All we have to do is manage the trends, okay? And that, that really came into, you know, where I finally learned after years and years of just literally beating my head against the wall that the most important thing to study in in charting is the actual price of the chart this is where price is king kind of came from price is the ultimate indicator okay and it doesn't matter what indicators you decide to use or, or how many indicators you decide to use. If they t distract you from the focus of what price action is doing, you're missing the point. Price is key. Okay. So when looking at the price action of the chart, we have to look at the development of a pattern. Now, this tends to be really easy for me because when I look at a chart like this, I literally see it in 3D and I don't know why. I think it's because I'm just built that way. I think it's because I spent so much time looking at blueprints, building houses, looking at blueprints and actually visualizing that blueprint in 3D. I can look at a flat picture and see it in 3D. And what I begin to see here is a pattern, okay? Can you guys see a stair step here? This is a staircase. And we're building a staircase higher. Okay? Now, every staircase has limitations, right? Every staircase cannot go up to infinity because eventually we're gonna run into some kind of ceiling, right? We're gonna run into some kind of ceiling. Now the only way you're gonna punch through that ceiling is if this staircase has enough momentum in it. Okay, we build enough momentum and we punch through. And that's where the whole idea of support and resistance comes into play. Price provides support. Price action supri sup um, supplies resistance. Okay? And we talk about that a lot. When we see price levels like this right here, <clears throat> and there's no sellers below this level, we have created a price level of support. It's being supported by buyers. No one wants to sell it below that, at least at this point. And if no one wants to sell it, we have to assume 
that we're going to maintain this trend. The only way we can maintain this trend <clears throat> is if we continue to support prices. Okay. So when I'm looking at a price action like this and I see a stock holding on to a price level, moving over toward its trend. By the way, very key element, guys. Stocks will tend to, not all the time, but will tend to move over to their trend. I don't know why it works so well, but it does. You draw a trend line on a chart and you're gonna find that after the trend has been established, right here is when the trend started. That's the first higher low in the chart. Now, why this first higher low has helped to maintain this trend all the way through here, couldn't tell you. But it does. Over and over and over again, it does. Okay, so as we have moved over to this area, I'm going to look at this price action in here, and I'm going to take a look and evaluate this chart. Now, if I were trading this as a stock trade and I look up here and I see price resistance in this area, um, I can tell you, in fact, I'm going to move that down right there. I'm going to tell you honestly, I don't know that I would trade that as a stock trade. But as an option trade, that's an easy trade. That's an easy position. So if I look at a chart like this, I'm going to try and determine, do I have enough move, potential move in this stock, the way you view it, not necessarily the way I view it, but the way you view it, do you have enough potential move in that trade to make it worth the risk? Okay. Can you put together a trade that makes sense to you? So for me, this is a no-brainer. I can easily see plenty of room, particularly with an option trade, to move up to here. Now, why did I pick this area? <clears throat> well, I picked this area because of the touches that I have in here. All you gotta do is move a line around. You'll, you'll see them if you work at it. There, we hit it as a high. That was resistance. Here, we held it as support. When we dropped down through here, we tried to regain it right here. And you can see the big rejection of that price right there. And then we tried to regain it again and the big rejection of that level right there. So that's why I picked that area. Now, is it wrong to say, if you look at this and say, hey, I would prefer to put it here? No. Could you put it there and make a good case for that? Yeah, absolutely could. If you see the chart that way, then you have to evaluate it by the way you see it. Can you still make enough money in this trade to make that worthwhile? If that's the way you see the trade. Others will look at this trade and say, no, that's neither one of those is right. The price action resistance is going to be up here. You have to make that call. Now, one thing I want to say about price resistance here. Does price resistance mean the stock can never go through it? No, we talked about that. If the stock has enough momentum, these ceilings get broken through. So should we fear a price resistance? Should we fear it? You're right, Alan. It's a, it's a wider area. Should we fear price resistance? No, we should respect it, but we shouldn't fear it. Because the only way a trend can develop is we have to consistently be breaking through price resistance. Okay, so we need to respect price resistance and we need to use price resistance as a good place, a logical place to be taking some of the profits of a trade or all of the profits of the trade off. Putting some money in our account. That's what we're here to do. We're not here to be right. 
I say that every once in a while and people just argue that well, you have to be right. No, we, we're not here to be right. We're here to do an evaluation of the chart and work to put the odds of this trade in our favor, not to be right. Because there's no way that you can know this trade is going to be right. But what we can look at this chart and say is if we enter this position, our odds are in our favor. We see institutional accumulation in here. We see a break of the downtrend. We see that prices are being supported at logical areas. That adds more odds to us winning in the direction of this trade. Would you guys agree? It's not about being right. It's about developing a case that puts the odds in your favor. Okay, so when we're looking at a chart like this, and I start to see price action where we've moved up sharply, and we pull back, I start looking for reasons places where I can place alerts and wait for the trade. Okay, I wait for the trade. I don't try to chase the pops. <clears throat> you guys will hear me say this a lot, and this is a pattern that I see over and over and over in the charts, and it's one that catches all of us at some point in time. We see the stock pull back and right at where we would expect it to find support, buyers, buyers show up. It pops in there. But if that happens to occur well before the time we reach trend, I'm seeing that this often either consolidates or even pulls back after that first pop. You guys need to watch that pattern. It happens a lot. And we all get trapped in that, right? We see that stock. And here's the other thing. If that stock moves up sharply and we go, oh my gosh, I'm missing out. I got to catch this trade. It pulls back a couple days and shows you that buy signal and you just hop. You just jump. You don't pay attention to the fact that the trend may be all the way over here. And you hop on that trade. And then the next thing that happens is this. It pulls back and moves over to the trend. <clears throat> that is happening so much anymore in the price patterns. Um, I see it almost all the time. It's, it's as if the institutions, the algorithms, has, has figured this out. If they can pop right here, if they can pop that stock, they can sell into that position all the way back to trend. And it's happening over and over and over in these price patterns. So pay attention to that trend line. Where is the trend? Now, can trends change? Yes, they do it all the time. For example, if this were to continue to, to consolidate sideways in here, it can't move out, continues to consolidate sideways and then buyers step in. All that's happened here is the trend is flattened out. We have a little bit less of momentum in its upward trend. That's all. Trends do change. Trends can also, if this were to move up quickly, pull back, can change the trajectory of its trend if those buyers step in early. Okay, so keep that in mind. <clears throat> You'll want to pay attention to that pretty closely. When I see something like this, if it's going to pop early, I will often wait for this buy signal, just like right here, and then I will require it to follow through. So what that means is I will place an alert above or right at the top of that candle. Okay, it has to follow through. If it's going to follow through and break its trend and change that trend trajectory, I want to wait for that proof. I don't want to buy it here 
and then just suffer the pullback into the trend. Okay, does that make sense? So if you look at the drawings on my chart that I trade from, right here is where I placed a trade alert. Okay? Can you guys see why I placed a trade alert there? The stock right in this area, this is something we all fail at from time to time, don't we? We look at this like this, this chart, we're so zoned in on such a small portion of the chart, we forget to see what's in the chart. We don't even look at it. <clears throat> we don't look at what's going on in here. Okay, so let's, let's decipher this part of this chart for just a second. Okay, if I were in this chart, looking and paying attention to this chart, notice what's happened in this price action here. Not only did we pull back, but can you guys see this phase right in here? where buyers and sellers are pretty much in agreement with the price. There's that resting period in, in there. That right there constitutes the pop out of the box pattern. Pop out of the box pattern requires a minimum of four candles. The reason it's four candles is because there's actually a chart pattern out there. It's called a mat hold and that's three, three tiny um, consolidation candles. So the, so the pop out of the box requires a minimum of four of those little tiny candles where our range in the price action shrinks. Okay, our price range shrinks here because buyers and sellers are kind of in agreement on price. We're waiting to find out who's going to win this battle. We know we can't stay in a tight range forever. Okay, If the stock doesn't start to move up, then the sellers will come in and break it down. Right? They won't stick around holding something that's not going to move for them in the direction that they want it to move. So they'll sell it off. So all we have to do is we have to wait for the signal that buyers are going to step in and start moving this stock higher, showing confidence in the price of the chart. We want to see those buyers pushing that stock up. Okay, so when you look at a chart like this, look at the price action of the chart. Don't just look at this candle here that's wiggling around today. What's going on in the price action of that chart? Notice that over here, this consolidating period after we broke the downtrend, Notice the range of these candles in here. These candles in here are wide and choppy. As a stock begins to move up and develop its trend, its price action becomes more deliberate. Becomes easier to trade. So you will often find, for me, you will often find me avoiding this area. And to some folks, that's just like sacrilegious because, you know, you're buying, you're buying a higher low. Why, why wouldn't you want to jump into that trade? It's because I'm picky. I choose to wait for the better price action. I choose to wait for the better deliberate moves in the stock. Okay, going back to that comment in YouTube. Yes, if you only wildly speculate, you're likely going to lose in this game. But if you treat this like a business with a set of rules and focus in on what that price action is telling you, you eliminate a lot of that speculation. You certainly still have to take the risk. Okay, there is risk, just like in any business. 
but you put that risk in with a good solid plan, a good solid set of why you did it. Price action has become more concise. We're building this trend. Okay, is that making some sense guys? So just a little bit of effort in looking at that price action of that chart can definitely determine how well you will do in your trading. If we hard focus just on the hard right edge and watch that candle wiggling around. And here's the problem, guys. Uh, this happens so much of the time. People try to swing trade. They try um, lots of different things and they fail. They fail at it. And so they say, well, it's just chopping me to pieces. So what must happen is I, I, I need to go faster. That's the only way to make this better. I need to go faster. I need to go into intraday charts. Do you know that in intraday charts, people lose money faster? If they don't follow a good set of rules and plans. See, going faster won't solve your problem. You can day trade perfectly fine as long as you're willing to follow the same set of rules. The patience of waiting for the trade. The patience of waiting for the price pattern. Right? You want to see someone that is very risk averse and extremely picky about his trades. Go watch Steve trade day trade. There's no gambling in what Steve is doing. He is very strict on a set of rules and he hates over risk and he will not take it. It doesn't matter how good the chart looks or what anybody else says, he won't take that trade unless it's right. That makes him a successful day trader. So if you want to move into that faster period, you still have to demonstrate the patience, the willingness to wait, and the dedication to a set of guidelines and rules. Does that make sense? I don't care what time frame you choose. But if you continue to run with wild speculation into these trades and don't use good quality price action um, study, you're going to lose money. That's exactly right, Steve. <clears throat> and it'll blow it up fast in day trading if you don't pay attention. Okay. So let's take a look at another chart. There's been a lot of conversation about General Electric. Does anyone like this chart in General Electric? Hey, we have some great patterns here in this chart, right? Stock moving down, breaking this downtrend here. Putting in this nice bottom in this chart, nice little W bottom, giving us this nice uptrend in this chart, it's looking good, right? Everything about this chart is just exactly what we just talked about. If I start putting in some additional setup lines here, you can see we've held support levels that run back here. There's that little high point that gave us that resistance and now we're holding it as support. Okay, we can look further in the chart and we can see the next resistance level in this chart is right up here, filling that gap, that little gap right in here, moving up in, that's our next resistance level in the chart, pretty easy to see. But here's a problem with this chart that a lot of people aren't paying attention to. If I pull this chart back and draw the longer term trend in here, there's a resistance right in here. If I draw even a longer term trend, there's a resistance right in here. Okay. And when I start stacking up resistance levels, 
they start conjoining in a specific area, I have to be really concerned about that resistance. Okay. The price action of the chart is showing me that when we reach this downtrend line, and it's shown me that for years now, when we reach this downtrend line, we fail. Okay? So the closer and closer we begin to approach this downtrend area, the more conservative I need to be or careful on those trades because what is this price action told us all the way down here? When we reach up and touch this area, we fail, we pull back. So consequently, I won't take this trade now. I won't take this trade until it does this. It moves through the downtrend. I want to see proof that those institutions are actually going to support that price. If they're going to push this through and show me that they're going to support this price up here, we'll see the price action start to develop in a manner that I can trade. But I also want you guys to, to remember that accumulation phase. Does that accumulation phase just do this? Rarely. Rarely does it just do that. That accumulation phase will normally take time. There'll be a process in here where we'll build this up. That's a normal phase. Okay. <clears throat> Fundamentals, Rick. Um, for <clears throat> for the short term swing trader, um, there's really there's really no point in studying fundamentals. If you want to be a long-term investor, um, then you want to study the fundamentals. Okay? But a lot of us made money in this stock. We know the fundamentals of this company stinks on ice. But we made money in this stock because of the price pattern. So, <clears throat> there is a place for fundamentals. But most of the time, for uh, those of us that are swing traders, intraday traders, any of that kind of uh, person, fundamentals really don't matter. It's what price is doing and how, how traders are reacting to what price is doing. That's what's important. Okay. <clears throat> so if we follow along, there was a time when I, I was showing people, you know, Sears Holding. And everybody, I mean everybody, was mentioning, come on, man, Sears Holding is going down the tubes. Why would you be interested in trading Sears Holding? But I proved that I was right. I traded the price action and I made money. So if we focus in on the price of the stock, put that fundamental stuff aside. If you want to trade as a longer term trader, then fundamentals become much more important. But if you want to be a sw swing trader, put that stuff aside. It really doesn't matter. What matters is what we see in the chart. How are, how are buyers and sellers reacting to these, these price patterns in the chart? Yeah, everybody needs to pay attention to earnings. I mean, earnings are just, it's a crapshoot. <clears throat> okay. And yeah, uh, Coach, I think this whole area right in here, this entire area in here should be watched very closely. This is where we could really see that failure occur. It doesn't mean that it will. Like I said, I'm going to wait at this point on GE. It has to get out of here. It has to get out of here and it has to prove that it can hold this support. After that, hey, I'll trade this chart all day long. 
But when we're approaching those levels like that, there's just no, there's just too much risk in the trade. There's no point. There's no point in making that position happen. And there's too much risk in it. There's too many other good charts to trade. That's the other thing that happens with traders all the time is we get so focused on one chart. We think, oh, my gosh, GE, GE, GE's got to be a great company. GE's been around forever. It's got to come back. No, it does not. There's nothing about this chart that says that it's going to love you just because you love it. Find a better chart. Don't sell yourself into anything. Make the chart, the stock, prove to you it's worthy of your money before you enter any trade. Don't talk yourself into anything on a trade. Okay? So let's take a look at some other charts. Um, let's take a look at um, some of the casino stocks. IGT, IGT, starting to develop a pattern here, right? Can you guys see this pattern developing in here like we kind of described? This is that accumulation phase. It appears to be that accumulation phase. You can see that we've broken the downtrend. Okay, downtrend has been breached. You can see that we have successfully tested that downtrend and showing support from buyers holding that downtrend. Okay. That is a pattern that we always want to look for and watch in the market. We want to watch for those reversals where we start to see that price pattern occur. So when I see things like that going on, I start drawing up a chart. I start marking up downtrends. I start marking up price support areas. I start looking for potential entries into the trade. By the way, this happens to be a round of bottom breakout pattern. I cannot tell you if this is going to complete or be a good round and bottom breakout pattern. I can only tell you that that accumulation phase may be coming to an end and we may start the structure of a trend. And all I can do is watch that chart and wait for that potential entry into the trade. Okay. Does that make sense? Think about think about that as you start seeing the way these the price structure of these charts develop. Okay. Now let's take this to the other side of things. Let's take this to the diamonds. And I've been echoing some caution here. On this echoing some caution here and the reason we have a different chart here is because this area here was the distribution area of the chart and we've rallied straight back up and I want you to notice the levels of resistance in that chart the closer and closer I get to significant levels of resistance the more and more cautious I get on the overall market. These are those phases that you have to be careful in. It's okay to continue to trade long. It's okay to continue to hold long positions. It's not a good idea. Well, let me just ask you guys this question. Is it a good idea when we're pushing a big resistance area like this? Is it a good idea to be just blindly buying 
all kinds of stocks. Well, they're in great price patterns, Doug. They're in great price patterns. Why shouldn't I buy it? Yeah, it's a bad idea. It's a bad idea. We have to wait now for proof, right? We're pushing up here at resistance. Will the institutions continue to support this to move this straight on back up? And I gotta ask you, if we come all the way back up here to the high, and I think that's entirely possible, if we come all the way back up here to the old high, what has really changed in the market to make us believe that the market is worth that much money when we look at the differences between 2017 and now? Kind of nutty, right? All of, all of a sudden we have all of this worry about global shut, slowdowns and stuff, but we're pushing those highs. Possible China trade deal, okay? I get that. That's wonderful. Possible tra China trade deal. What's the first word in what you just said there? Possible. We don't know. We don't know. Everyone have good sound? Okay, good. Bianca, you may have to just click that red X in the upper right hand corner and reboot the room and that should clear it up. Okay. So I'm being cautious. I haven't said it's not okay to trade long. I've said I'm not going to be buying any more long positions. I don't want to, particularly ahead of a three-day weekend. But because we're running into that price action, I cannot be blindly bullish as well. That's another fallacy that people get trapped in. How many people got trapped over here? Market just can never go down. I know because I got the emails that a lot of the folks, a lot of the members of the room did not heed the warning. Market's not gonna go down. And then it does. Okay. That's a true broker right there, Rickster, because they've been trained. If you look at the market on a long enough time period, market doesn't go down. So in his way of thinking, the only thing he wants to do is sell you investments that you'll hold forever. That's a true broker thinking. Okay. So we have to be a little bit careful and cautious here. We're watching that price action. Let's take a look at a few more charts. Um, I know a lot of folks really are into, you know, the big tech stocks that, you know, we, we get really excited about these tech stocks um, uh, because they're always in the news. Okay. But I want you to notice that the structure that we've just talked about is very, very common in all charts we have that downtrend that downtrend works almost with perfection here we fail at that level so why would we try to speculate in this area right here that we should be buying this chart again look at the price action of the chart not just the hard right edge what's going on here in this chart. 
If we take a look at what's going on currently here, do we have a trend in this chart? Now currently, obviously this was an earnings, earnings pop. I need to move this line. This was an earnings pop. Okay, but isn't it interesting that this pullback that's going on in this earnings uh, after that big pop has been very, very controlled? Isn't it interesting that it's moving back toward its trend? Let it pull back. And then we watch and wait in this trade. So what I would be watching and waiting for in this price pattern is when all of a sudden we get those little tiny spinning dojis in here and we start moving over sideways. We get that confirmation that we're holding in here. And that's when I would look to place a price alert. As a matter of fact, I could honestly place a price alert on this chart right here. See the touches in that in that area? I would probably put it right about there. A pop above that level would probably show those buyers starting to step back in here, right? Now, I will tell you, I'm not sure that I would take this trade, but that's what I'm looking for in every chart. I'm looking for that structure to start to develop. Once again, notice that the price bars up here are more concise than these price bars here when we just break out and prove a downtrend hold. The range of these bars start to diminish. We start getting that more um, deliberate price action. This is certainly bearish still here. But notice the price action is more deliberate. It's more controlled. Okay. Is this stuff helping, guys? Is it making any sense to you at all? Good. Good. Because once you start to look at a chart this way, you you honestly start to bring the odds into your favor. Most traders, when I work with them, are very, very close to being a 50-50 trader, meaning that they win five trades, they lose five trades. They're close. Okay, but here's the mistake. They're, they're, they're letting their losers be too big. Their winners, they cut off too soon because they're, they finally have a winner, so they just can't stand the pressure. They take that off too soon. They have no confidence in their ability and their trading, and that's what creates, even with a 50-50 win-loss ratio, creates a losing account. Okay. One of the things that people do when that is happening is they believe that they need to change up everything. They need to make these radical changes. I need 14 new indicators and I need to change my time frame and I need to do all of these different things. And, and none of that's true. What they need to do is spend a little bit more time focusing on the price action and the trades that they're taking and how they're putting that, the odds of those trades to work. Okay, they're not going through the process of evaluating the price action of that chart. And one of the problems is, guys, is because people are not planning their trades. I see it every single day. I see it on half of the posts that come into the room. We see a candle or a stock that's shooting up 
What do you think about this chart? And everyone knows what my answer is going to be. Needs to rest or pull back before I'm interested. There's too much risk in that chart. Because we're avoiding the, the, the plan. We're not thinking about the risk of the trade. We're letting our emotions dictate our actions rather than the price action of the chart put together a good quality trade. Does that make sense, guys? When we see these stocks hopping and popping, and the only thing we can talk about is these stocks like, um, take a look at like EA. I don't know how many questions I've answered on EA over the last few, um, a few days, but a lot of questions. Should I be buying EA? Is there any price structure in that chart that makes you think you should buy EA? Unless you're a day trader and looking at an intraday pattern, there's nothing in that chart. Nothing in that chart that makes sense for us to even spend more than a couple seconds looking at that position, that chart. It, it's, it's nonsensical. There's nothing there. But we get all excited about that move and we say, well, should I be buying that? Should I be buying that? No, you shouldn't be buying it. If you put any kind of a trade plan together on there, it would tell you, you can't buy it. So if you're going to be a price action trader, make sure you understand the price action setups that work for you that makes sense to you. Why waste your time on this chart? It's a complete waste of time. There's no need to even look at it more than a couple seconds. Nope, can't trade that. Now the fact that this is rallied up doesn't mean that this chart can't be in a watch list. Because now that we've broken the downtrend, got all of this volatility maybe out of its system, a little rest, a little pullback, a little consolidation could definitely set up that deliberate price pattern here, right? But until that occurs, this is just something for the watch list. Nothing else. Okay. So here's the next thing I want to talk about in price action trading. If you don't know your tolerance to risk, if you have not planned what your tolerance to risk is, you are not ready to trade. Over and over and over again, folks will post charts and I will measure to where the stop loss should be and I'll say, can you take a 12% loss in a trade? <laughs> well, no, can't take that much of a loss. Then why did you even post that chart? It's not ready for a trade. It's not even close to being ready for a trade. You wouldn't take it if you planned the trade, but you allowed your emotion to jump in because that sucker popped up and oh my gosh, I've got to hurry up and jump into this trade. No, you don't. I don't care how far the stock pops up and runs, that stock will not love you and all of a sudden it can reverse just as quickly and gut your account. So if you're going to be a price action trader, you've got to follow a discipline. If you don't know what your tolerance to risk is on a trade, and if you're not planning, you're going to be always subject to emotional actions. You're allowing yourself to be led around. Don't let your emotions lead your trading. Okay, look at the price action of the chart. Look for those better signals in a trade. Look for the structure in the trade. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to get into this trade. I could have right here, but there's, again, there's that pattern that I'm always cautious of, that first pop up after a significant pullback. 
I don't take that trade. I wait for the next entry into the position. This one had earnings and gapped. Okay, gapped beyond my entry point in the trade. All right, but there's that price pattern again. Here's that accumulation. <clears throat> that acu <clears throat> excuse me. Here's that accumulation phase that occurred. <clears throat> By the way, if you pull this chart back, here's the distribution phase. They're very similar, right? How do we know that this is a distribution phase? Because we wait until the price breaks down. <clears throat> Our trade is not here. Our trade is following the downtrend or following the uptrend. Not in, not in these phases. This is the choppy place where you're going to have your account chewed up unless you're trading very you know quick intraday charts you could certainly trade this okay but both of these phases are very comparable are they not wild choppy price action candles big moves notice the length of these candles they're very very choppy we only start to get structure in the chart once we get through that area now unfortunately this had earnings and this right here as you can see I've marked as a major level of resistance in the chart <clears throat> so this either needs to pop through and hold it as support it may require a long consolidation out here we may actually get a pullback and then rally back up here and then the failure Okay, so I have to wait on this chart now. There's no trade that I can take here. You guys lo know that I love Nike chart, the Nike, Nike chart. I cannot trade it right now. In no way, shape, or form can I trade this. Would you guys agree this is how a double top gets formed? Just exactly like this. It's how a double top gets formed. <clears throat> So the only thing I can do on this trade now is I have to wait and see if the institutions are going to continue to support this price, push this stock through here, and hold its support. If that is the case, then I can trade it again. But if that is not the case, when I see this really big resistance area here, I have to stand aside. There's too much risk. The odds in this trade have lowered dramatically. Yeah, Nike was great moves in here. Here's that same same pattern that we talked about. Okay, that phase in here where we chop around, big price candles, we finally break the downtrend. We start to settle into good, con concise price. There's an alert, there's an alert, there's an alert. Pretty simple following the structure of the chart notice that the price action here much more deliberate easy to read okay here's the other thing I would mention on this is if you take a chart like Nike and you go back in time you'll find similar price patterns What about that? Is that a whole lot different than that? Nope. What about this? Is that a whole lot different than that? Nope. What about this? Isn't that what I just described? 
that's where I want to trade it. I want to pay attention to the price action of the chart and put the odds in my favor on the trade. Make sense? So when I see a chart like this pushing those resistance levels, I have to back away. I have to be thinking about taking profits and walking away from that trade. Same thing would be true with Starbucks here. Starbucks pushing through and just not stopping. So I have to wait for the next level of support to be created. When you get a stock that runs like this with no turn back, the danger of the pullback grows. Does that make sense, guys? When we have a stock that just is relentlessly moving higher, does it make sense to you that the odds of the pullback are growing and the danger of that pullback is also growing? We know eventually it will occur. It has to occur. That's how the market works. And the longer we move up without any kind of a pullback to test support, the more damaging that pullback will normally be. Okay, the example of that is right here. Look at the damaging effect of that massive run up. So the farther we stretch away, the more danger comes into that chart, the more I have to be cautious about that position in the trade, okay? Now, let's talk about buy signals and sell signals and things like that a little bit. We're running kind of long here, but I knew I would today. One of my favorite subjects is price action. And I get this question all the time, what's a buy signal? A buy signal to me is when we're, our price action is testing, is at or near price support and trend or trend, okay? I want to see that structure in the chart. When I see that structure in a chart, then I start looking for those candle signals that buyers are picking up the trade. Would you guys agree that this candle right here Hold back to this support and we see buyers stepping up. That is a buy signal to me. Buyers are reacting to a price support. They're reacting to the trend. We're holding this level. That is a buy signal. You have to decide how you enter that trade. Now for me, I didn't catch this one, but I did see this pop up in this little tiny consolidation here. And I put an alert right over the top of that. Okay. So you can, you have to decide how you want to find those trades or enter those trades. And it's up to you on your, um, on your reading of that price action. But I can tell you this, if a stock moves too big all at once, I probably won't trade it. You guys know that I'm more interested in looking for the pullbacks, the consolidations for my entries, making the trade come to me, not chasing the trade. So me waiting for this to occur here was way easier than me taking this trade. Patience. I never have to rush to a trade. Okay. So morning star patterns we all know what a morning star pattern looks like um, we all know what a bullish candle pattern looks like a hammer and a follow-through pattern is a buy signal if it's around a good support level or near trend a hammer and a buy you know bullish candle we also know that kicker patterns can be very productive a kicker is where we were moving down and we kicked higher we completely reversed. That's that signal here that we looked at in AMD. AMD is a kicker pattern. 
we were going in this direction, something kicked this in the other direction. That's a kicker. That doesn't necessarily mean that that's an entry signal because of the way this one moved, but a small kicker pattern can be a very good entry signal. Okay. It can be a bullish engulfing candle. But please keep in mind on all of these candle patterns, placement is important. Placement is important. If the stock is not reacting to a support level, if it's not reacting to a trend, is it a buy signal? For me, no. Because I can have bullish engulfing candles directly at price resistance. That's not a buy signal. Okay. We buy stocks at or near price support. We sell stocks or we go short stocks at or near price resistance. Okay, so the placement of these buy signals is important. Very important. I've already talked about how this first pop candle, if it occurs away from the trend, there's a good chance it will pull back or continue to consolidate over to the trend. The placement of that candle is important. Where that candle occurs in the pattern Okay, so we cannot just randomly scan or think that, you know, the morning star is going to save my life here. I, all I need is a morning star and I'm going to be good. That's just not true. Never has been true. Okay, the placement of that pattern is critical to the trade. Okay, we have to pay attention to the overall chart. We have to pay attention to the details of the price action. And then we have to be discerning about the signals that in, we enter into that trade. We have to base that against our set of rules for a trade setup. Does this fit my risk tolerance? Can I make enough money in this trade to make it worthwhile? All of these steps have to be completed to make a good trade. And if you fail on one of those steps, you're likely going to lose money. You have to follow through. Okay? You have to look at the odds of the trade. You have to determine whether that trade is good for you. I will find trades and post them. People say, well, I don't like that trade. Great. I would rather hear you say, I don't like that trade than just blindly follow. Because if you don't see what I see in the chart, that trade is not for you. If I put out a trade that doesn't fit you personally, don't take the trade. If you can't make your risk tolerance fit that trade, it is not your trade. Because as soon as you follow a trade like that that doesn't fit you, you're going to be emotional about it the entire time. You will not be able to handle the pressure of that trade or be able to stick in the position. You'll panic and you'll take the loss. KeyBank has a nice morning star. Would you guys agree? 
key bank nice little morning star pattern is this reacting to a price support whoops is that reacting to a price support is it reacting to the trend that's about a perfect morning star pattern now typically morning stars will have a little more pullback in them okay but that's okay that is about the perfect morning star pattern thank you alan beautiful chart so in this pattern you have to look at this chart if you look at this chart and say well gee if i buy this right here and my stop loss has to be below those tails right there and i have to take a oh a four and a half percent risk if your tolerance is not four and a half percent this trade is not for you if you look at that trade and your first thought in this trade is let's look back here this and i see you see i shouldn't say i see and you see this is a resistance that you don't think the stock can break through this trade is not for you If you look at this chart and say, hey, the structure of this chart is starting to develop nicely, this chart has broken its downtrend. It's starting to develop a nice structure here in this chart. I believe these price levels will begin to break and will continue to hold this trend. And I see this coming all the way up into here eventually, give it some time, up into here, then this trade might be for you. Does that make sense, guys? You have to make those evaluations in those trades. You have to consider, are you going to be overly emotional in this trade? Because it's 4.5% risk. I can't, can you take 4.5% risk? If you can't, you can't take that trade. Don't take the trade. In fact, what you might want to do is wait and see if this consolidates a little bit more. Could it consolidate right in here, right up against this resistance area? Could it consolidate right over here, move back over the trend, and then give you a tighter entry into the stop with a stop? Yes, it could. Wait for the trade that fits you. Wait for the trade that fits you. Okay. Second here. I had a private message about balance of power here, um, and I'm not sure what the context is. Um, Al, if you could. Help me out with the context here. I don't know when you sent that. I got had somebody blinking, <coughs> uh, blinking um, private messages. I, I just caught it, but I'm happy to answer the question about balance of power. I just um, I don't know. I don't know where you were looking at that, and and it has to apply to some context. Uh, balance of power can be a great a great tool, but it has to be in the right the right setting for for that to be useful <clears throat> okay amrs sure let's take a quick look at we'll finish it up today with this one um and I truly hope you guys are, are starting to see um, the importance of these price patterns and what's going on in, in the chart, okay? Um, when we start looking at the big picture, we start seeing these phases of a chart. We start seeing how the chart is developing. Then we can start putting the odds in our favor on a trade, okay? 
We can start putting the odds in, the, in our favor on a trade. Um, taking a look at this chart, do we have an accumulation phase in here? Well, a little bit, yes. We do have that choppy continuation phase in here. Stock moved down and then has all of a sudden reversed its direction. So something has changed here in this chart. Right? Certainly something has changed here in this chart. We have prices starting to develop here. Okay? What we don't have yet in this chart is a calming of the price action yet because apparently this was an earnings event popping up and now pulling back. We're getting pretty wide price action bars. That's perfectly acceptable as long as you're willing to handle that risk. Okay, so there's our price support area. There's a hammer and a bullish candle. That's a morning star pattern, okay? Three candles together, that's a morning star pattern. That is a potential buy signal here, okay? Do we have a possible trend here? I think the answer to that is yes. We have a possible trend here. Now the question becomes, where do you see resistance and where do you see your stop loss being? And in this chart, if you buy this right in here and your stop loss needs to be under this, are you willing to accept an 11.69% stop loss? That's the problem with this chart. The problem with this chart is the range of the price action. It's not concise yet. Okay. So if you cut an early coach, you know, um, awesome. Awesome. But this is not a chart for most people because of the range in these bars. Now, the next thing is, where do you see price resistance? If you happen to see price resistance right here, you've got a problem in this trade. If you see price at resistance up here, you may be okay on this trade. Okay, so it all comes down into your how you're going to define that trade and that trade plan. Okay, there's a lot of price movement in this chart, big candles. Okay, a lot of percentages being changed. This this was an 8% move in one day. We know just by that 8% move in one day that I'm probably going to have to take a 9 or 10% risk in this trade to place the stop loss from this point on. So for me, this is one I would pass on. I like the price pattern. I like the price um, the price support, all of those things match. I won't take that trade. Because right now, if I place my stop, if I were to enter this now, place my stop here, I'm taking as almost as much risk in the trade, even if I have the belief we can come up to here. And I do, I, ha I believe we could do that. I'm taking as much or more risk in this trade than I could potentially gain. I won't take that trade. Okay, that's me personally. If that's your trade, not a problem. Not a problem. All right, so guys, I hope this was helpful for, for everyone. I hope you kind of got a sense of what it means to, to be a price action trader, to really focus in on that price action, looking at those price patterns and being picky about the entries that you take, understanding that 
not only do you have to look at the price action of the chart, you have to have an understanding of what your tolerance to risk is. You have to have an understanding of what constitutes enough reward in a trade to make the risk worthwhile. If you don't have those, those elements, you're going to always be subject to emotional trading. So you can see in this, like just in this chart, I can look at this chart and say I love the structure, I love the trend, I love the fact that the price is reacting to support. I can't take that trade. I know that very quickly and I don't have a problem with that. In fact, I have no problem whatsoever in this trade walking away from it doesn't bother me. I don't have that fear of missing out because I have a discipline in my trading. Either the trade fits me and it's my trade or it doesn't and it's not. It's that simple. It's black and white. I can love this chart, all everything about this chart and not take the trade. If it doesn't fit me personally, that is the discipline. That is the discipline of being in any business. Okay, we have to have a set of rules and guidelines that we follow. Any business that doesn't follow a set of rules and guidelines won't be in business very long. We have to weigh the risk and the reward of every decision we make. Okay, so think about that as you're progressing in this chart reading and, and, and understand that how you see the chart may be different than me. And that's okay. If you see something different in a chart that I don't see and that fits you personally, then make that trade. Okay, I see Al. Hold on, Al. Um, AMD. AMD balance of power. Let's take a look at balance of power on AMD. Al's asking about balance of power on AMD. Okay, AMD, um, when you see, um, on my chart anyway, depending on how you set it up, when you see anything on balance of power that comes above the zero line, that's positive balance of power, okay? But when you see it as yellow, it's neutral. It's bullish, but neutral. There's not a big predominance of buying going on in there. Okay, so what I prefer to see in a balance of power is I prefer to see um, lots and lots of green in that little consolidation. But I want you to know the balance of power is, is just like any other indicator. It's often wrong. Okay, there's very specific rules that I use around balance of power. Okay, and it doesn't sway me necessarily from a trade or choosing one trade over another. It may not sway me for that unless I have those very specific rules um, met. So just a second here, I'm gonna run a quick balance of power sort in my list. Take a look at, nah. Okay, see, a chart like this, okay, would bring interest to me in balance of power, okay? Now, why does that bring interest to me in balance of power? Well, first, as you can see in this chart, I have this trend. I have a nice upward trend that's had structure in it. We've pulled back. We've found support levels. We've held on. We've consolidated over toward trend. It has structure in its pattern. Okay, now this balance of power coming in here is giving me a clue right here at this level. Okay, why would there be buying going on right here at this level? Such strong buying going on at this level. Clearly a resistance level here, right? Big resistance level in the chart. Could it be an accumulation phase of institutions picking up this chart? Very much similar to what occurred right here before we popped. OK, 
okay so I will watch a chart like this as it consolidates and that balance of power begins to bring pressure to this trade if I can get that break through here might be an interesting trade okay might be an interesting trade we're clearly holding support levels right this is a very nice support level right here to be holding on to all of these price touches through here confirm this is a nice level of potential support so this balance of power could be those institutions trying to sneak into this guy expecting this to move higher all right but what Kimberly just posted there is absolutely true. The balance of power only puts you into the neighborhood of a possible trade. It doesn't pick the trade for you. The price action of the chart is what makes the trade. Okay. Um, AT, no none whatsoever the balance of power indicator that they have over there is nothing like what's in toss it, yeah like ed says it's a proprietary indicator of tc2000 so okay All right, guys. Hey, I want to wish you all a great Saturday. I want to wish you a great three-day weekend. Thanks, everyone, for being here today. Yeah, big time. I'm gonna, There's a good chance I won't be talking the rest of the weekend. <laughs> everyone, you take care of yourselves. Have a great, great weekend. Thanks for being here. Hope you got something out of this. Um, just know that there's lots of great charts right now producing really, really good potential buys. Um, we just have to uh, be patient and wait for those trades. Remember that the market is a bit overextended and we could experience a pullback at any time. But there's great charts out there forming. Here's, a, here's one of those good examples just to kind of finish up. Here's one of those good examples of BOP building into a trade. Everyone can look at this chart and probably see this big cup and handle pattern potentially forming in the chart we've broken through a resistance level we're holding it as support and notice that we're going nowhere in the price action of the chart and i'm seeing a building of buying pressure that's my kind of chart for balance of power that good solid pattern holding support resistance as this moves over toward this trend I will get more and more interested in SWKS okay everyone have an awesome 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 Saturday I appreciate everyone for being here